Good afternoon and welcome. I am a professor of social sciences, Sheldon Malov, and the Grand Marshal for the 2022 commencement exercise. Before we begin uh, today's memorial ceremony, I would like to remind you that in recognition of the recent uptick in COVID-19 rates, we ask each of you to wear a mask while inside. And now, if you are able, please stand for the national anthem led by graduating student Ninoshka de Leon Gill. Oh, say, can you see by the dawn's early light what so proudly we held at the twilight's last gleaming, whose broad stripes and bright stars through the perilous fight or the ramparts we watched were so gallantly streaming and the rockets were clear the bombs bursting in air gave proof through the night that our flag was still there oh say Thank you, Ninoshka, uh, and please be seated. Now it is my honor and privilege to introduce our college president, Dr. Belinda Miles. Thank you. It is my privilege to open the 74th commencement ceremony of Westchester Community College. Thank you, Professor Malib, for being the Grand Marshal, an honor reserved for a long-serving faculty member who has or will soon retire. We thank you for your remarkable 51 years of service as a member of the faculty. On behalf of the State University of New York System, SUNY, Westchester County, Westchester Community College Board of Trustees, and faculty, staff, and administrators of the college, I welcome our graduates and their guests. We welcome several honored guests too, members of the College Board of Trustees, our distinguished chairperson, Dr. Leroy Mitchell, vice chairs, Dr. Norm Jackness and Ms. Debbie Raises, Trustees, uh, the, um, our trustees include the Honorable John Nona and Ms. Susan Gary, who is with us this afternoon. And uh, we also thank County Executive George Latimer for his message to our graduates posted on the commencement webpage. And our speaker this afternoon, Ms. Lisa Denig, who we will introduce shortly. There are several groups of people without whom this day would not be possible. Our faculty are among the most dedicated, caring, and talented in the country. When the pandemic first hit our region, our faculty, supported by our very capable staff, pivoted within a matter of weeks from their planned course of in-person instruction to delivering courses remotely. You know this because you lived this. 
Throughout the pandemic, they have surpassed expectations in maintaining high levels of engagement and instruction that kept our students on track. Regardless of the uncertainties and changes in direction driven by the pandemic, they were determined to see you cross the finish line. They continue to improve and excel regardless of the mode of instruction, dedicated to one overriding mission, your success. At this time, I invite those members of our faculty who are Chancellor Award winners and recipients of the Distinguished Faculty Award to please stand and be recognized. Please remain standing while all members of our faculty stand to be recognized alongside you. That, folks, is where the magic happens. We also acknowledge some of the most important and influential people in our graduates' lives. The moms, dads, siblings, husbands, wives, grandparents, aunts, uncles, cousins, sons, daughters, and friends. Yes, indeed, give them a round of applause. Over the past couple of years, we had constant reminders of the importance of our own personal support systems. We all greatly appreciate everything that you've done to make it possible for your loved one to make it here and to complete their degrees. Thank you so much. <laughs> Next, we welcome remarks from a few of our honored guests. Our first speaker will be our board chairman, uh, Trustee Leroy Mitchell, who will bring greetings on behalf of the Board of Trustees, followed by Professor Chad Thompson, presiding officer of the Faculty Senate. And following Professor Thompson, Brenda Herrera, member of the graduating class and president of the Student Government Association, will offer remarks on behalf of students. Trustee Mitchell. Thank you, President Miles, parents, friends, relatives, distinguished guests, jubilarians, faculty, administrators of SUNY WCC, and, and above all, graduates of the class of 2022. I am Leroy Mitchell, Chair of the Board of Trustees at SUNY WCC. It is my distinct pleasure and privilege to bring you greetings from the Board of Trustees some of whom are present here with us. We have John Anona, we have Trustee uh, Susie Garrick, Su Susan Garrick, we have uh, Trustee Debbie Rezis, and we have uh, Trustee Debbie Rezis, Gary, John Nona, that's it. <laughs> <laughs> and myself. <laughs> <clears throat> On behalf of these individuals, and those of us who will be attending other segments of this year's ceremony, I would like to congratulate you, the graduates, and to thank you for making SUNY WCC your college of choice to take you to this milestone in your educational journey. I'm aware that few people remember graduation speeches. I will do what I'm expected to do, I'll be brief. One doesn't have to remind you of the challenges that you faced in getting here, but you have been resilient and persistent. You have met the challenges of becoming familiar with terms such as synchronous and asynchronous classes. You have become good students of the virtual classroom and remote learning. You have survived the mental stresses of not being physically present with your classmates. In other words, you adapted and you are now reaping the rewards of your hard work. Dolly Parton and Thomas Monson are among those for whom the, to whom the following saying has been ascribed. And I quote, we cannot direct the wind, but we can adjust the sails. And you have adjusted your sails with the guidance and support of your teachers, family and friends, to permit you to weather the pandemic and its attendant uncertainties, which so changed our lives. On behalf of my fellow trustees, I applaud your efforts and I wish you success with the credentials that you have earned at WCC. And here is your last assignment. 
If you think that WCC did a great job in preparing you for what lies ahead, tell the world so that many more will come and share your good experiences. On the other hand, if you think that there are things that we could have done better, please tell us so that we may improve on what we do to benefit those who come after you. I salute you and may you continue to build upon the foundation which you have laid at WCC. Thank you. On behalf of the faculty, I'd like to congratulate all of you on your accomplishment today. As faculty, we understand the significance of earning a credential as we have all been students ourselves. We understand that this took sacrifice, that to accomplish this, you have sacrificed resources away from other facets of your life. We understand that, um, <clears throat> sorry, that you had to sacrifice time away from friends and family, that you had to sacrifice commitments away from work and community. We understand that this took courage. It took courage for you to explore a curriculum that takes you beyond your comfort zone. It took courage for you to speak up in class that first time. It took courage for you to take that critical test. And it took courage for you to put yourself out there throughout this process and to have faith that in the end, you will grow as a result. We understand that this took discipline, a discipline to develop your skills and to learn something within your major so deeply and critically that you can now mold that into a new craft or a vocation. But we also understand what can emerge from a process like this besides this well-earned credential. What can emerge is a love of learning. What can emerge is a commitment to maintain an open mind. An open mind, not so open, however, that one's brain doesn't fall out. So what can emerge is an ability to think critically always. What can emerge is a newfound confidence in your own thought processes, but one now that is bounded by a sense of humility in your own knowledge. Because through education, we realize that the world is much larger and much more complex and much more wonderfully nuanced than it once seemed. And what can emerge is a sense of professional responsibility to continue learning within your future profession and to use what is learned to bear fruit for your community. And finally, what can emerge is a sense of personal responsibility to always seek the truth, even when it is murky, distant, or inconvenient. So again, on behalf of the faculty, we would like to congratulate you on your accomplishment we wish you well on your continued efforts beyond WCC, and we thank you for entrusting us with this important stage of your academic journey. Thank you, congratulations, and good luck. Hello, everyone. Hello, graduates of class of 2022. Hello to our staff, faculty, and administration, and a big hello to all of our loved ones here with us today and those joining us remotely but close to our hearts. Let's all take a moment together for each of us to reflect on our life journeys that have brought us up to this very moment in time. Every single decision we've ever made in all of our life moments have brought us all together here at WCC. WCC is every single one of you. It is you, it is me, it is the person sitting next to you, and every individual who works here. We are all WCC. And beyond just being a college, it is truly a community, and how fortunate am I to be part of this together with all of you. When we say we go to Westchester Community College, we are saying that is a community I am a part of. When we say we have graduated from WCC, we are saying that is the community I come from. And it is a community we will always be a part of. In thinking about community, I would like for all of us to reflect on our own communities. Perhaps the ones we grew up in who shaped who we are today. Perhaps we are a blend of all the communities we have been a part of. I would like us all to think about our personal communities or the team of people who have made it possible for us to be here today. Who is on your team? 
Perhaps it is your family, your friends, your pets, an educator, or a mentor you may have had. Or perhaps your personal team is not just people, but rather all the lessons that you've learned along the way that you carry with you. For some, it may be a team of one, doing this all on their own, or at least it may feel that way. But know that you are not alone and that all of us here graduating together are in your team. Let's take a moment to express our gratitude to everyone in our teams who have made graduation possible for us today. And let us not forget one very important person, you. You have gotten yourself here. You are here for a reason and you are seen and valued. If you are fortunate enough to have a team behind you, be part of someone else's team. And if you feel you are a team of one, look around. We are your team and WCC is your community. Let's take care of ourselves and take care of each other. Let's continue to celebrate ourselves and celebrate one another. Let's continue to be grateful for our teams and be grateful for each other. As we graduate and move forward, WCC becomes part of our story and we become part of its history. New students will continuously attend WCC and just as those who paved the way before us, we should pave the way for them, but we should not stop there. Beyond just paving the way, we can support them and be part of their team. They are the future change makers, but so are we. Do you all remember when we were younger and they would tell us that one day we would be the ones to change the world? Well, that day is today. As we graduate, some will go on directly into the workforce, some will continue their education, and some will forge their own paths. But overall, we will all go out into the world continuing on our own journeys, on our own timelines, and writing our own stories. My personal philosophy is that we can all change the world, as I believe there is a world within each and every one of us, and that everything we need is already within us. Since we are each a world of our own, when we say we can change the world, it can certainly mean at a global scale, but it can also mean changing just one person's life, even if the person we impact is ourselves. As we become part of WCC's story, we become the present and the future for this world. So let's go out and change it. Thank you everyone and congratulations class of 2022. Thank you so much, Brenda, Ms. Herrera, and Professor Thompson and Chairman Mitchell for your greetings to our graduates. Before I begin my remarks, I have a question for you. Does it feel good to be called graduate? Okay, I thought so. Get used to that title. You are indeed a graduate, and by your enthusiastic response, I take that as an indication that you fully appreciate the significance of that new designation that you so richly deserve. This graduating class is distinguished by its fortitude and perseverance. Many of you started your career at WCC at the height of the worst pandemic in more than 100 years, truly history making. All of you stayed focused on your goal of completion through the distractions and turmoil of not just the pandemic, but also the resulting health concerns, loss of family and friends, economic hardships, childcare requirements, and stress from social injustice. The rewards for your hard work and dedication are significant to you, to your family, and to our entire region. You are now well prepared if you intend to further your academic career. WCC is highly respected by four-year colleges and universities, dozens of whom have entered into transfer agreements with us so that you can have a smooth transition as you go on to continue your studies. By a round of applause, how many of you are planning to transfer to a four-year school in the fall? That is just awesome. Your future begins here. You're also now well prepared if you intend to enter or continue in the workforce directly from WCC. Your award-winning faculty have provided you with the skills and knowledge that employers in high demand fields throughout our region look for in their employees. You're now well prepared if you want to better provide for yourself and your family for years to come. 
21% of WC students who begin their academic journey from the lower income brackets end up in the top bracket later in life. WCC is ranked 21st nationwide on this measure of community colleges. By a round of applause, how many of you are planning to enter or continue full-time in the workforce now or in the near future? Congratulations. You're also now prepared to be a valued member of your community and to be a part of what drives Westchester County's growth and prosperity. WCC has been nationally recognized for its efforts in building a just civic society through activities that promote voter participation, celebration of LGBTQIA rights and equality, and continued commitment to diversity and racial justice. WCC's dedication to a liberal arts education means that you are exposed to new ideas and perspectives and that you de have developed critical thinking and other uniquely human-based life and professional skills that are so important in your future endeavors. By a round of applause, how many of you have had the opportunity to work full or part-time, have an internship, practicum, a service learning experience, or write a research paper, give a speech, or participate in a club or other extracurricular activity while at WCC? We are serious about getting you ready. Your education and overall experience at the college have been designed to put you on the road to success. However you might define that term for yourself, regardless of where your path takes you, the World Economic Forum has identified five skills that nearly all employers look for in their prospective employees. They are communication, being able to express yourself, and to accurately figure out who you're dealing with or read others. That's number one on the list. Number two is problem solving. This includes not just identifying a task and figuring out the solution, but the persistence to see it through. You're uniquely qualified for that. Number three, analytical skills. This includes asking the right questions and using evidence-focused thinking at every level in your organizations. Number four, customer service. This involves creating a positive experience for the key stakeholders that you engage with. And lastly is leadership. This is not just for those in the corner office or the C-suite. You will need to be able to make a clear list of priorities and not think in a binary way. You've gotta see the colors, not just the black and white. And will, will you be able to inspire others to outperform their own expectations? And will you outperform your own expectations? As you reflect on your experience at WCC over the past several years, I hope you agree that your professors, advisors, peers, and other members of this community have helped you develop these tools for success. It is an indication of the impact of these efforts that the graduation rate at WCC has doubled over the last several years. This milestone for the college is not a destination, but rather an indication that we are on the right path. Similarly, Graduation should not be considered a destination for you. Rather, it's a stop along the way, one that will enlighten the rest of your life's journey. As you continue on that journey, remember that WCC is here for you as an alum, just as we were during your days as a student, and just as we will be here if you need us. I hope that you will use your wisdom and talents to help those students who follow and always remember to carry as you climb. With that, I congratulate you again on this momentous achievement and wish you nothing but the best for the life that awaits you. I now have the pleasure of introducing our guest speaker, Ms. Lisa Denig, counsel to the Chief Judge of the State of New York, the Honorable Janet DeFiori. In this role, Ms. Denig analyzes and researches cases before the High Court and advises the Chief Judge. Prior to this position, she served in other legal capacities, including as special counsel for ADR initiatives for the New York State Office of Court Administration under the direct supervision of Deputy Chief Administrative Judge George Silver. She has also been Bureau Chief of Special Litigation in the Westchester County District Attorney's Office, as law clerk to the Honorable Lisa Margaret Smith, and as Chief of Staff to Putnam County Executive Robert Bondi, where she oversaw 20 different departments and nearly 500 employees. Ms. Denick received her Juris Doctor 
degree from Pace University Law School, her master's degree in public service from the University of Arkansas, and her bachelor's degree from Vassar College. But before all of these notable milestones in her life, Ms. Denig earned her associate's degree right here at Westchester Community College. It is my honor to present to you the current president of the WCC Alumni Association and today's featured speaker, Ms. Lisa Denning. Hi. Get myself situated here. Hold on one second. Good afternoon. And thank you so much for that lovely introduction and for inviting me back to WCC as your 2022 commencement speaker. And yes, I said back to WCC because as you just heard, I am a proud alum of this college. It feels like only yesterday that I sat where you sat, waiting to accept my associate degree in social science even though it was 22 years ago. So I want to ask, I want to start off by asking in our audience today, do we have any children that are here to um, cheer on mom or dad or their older brothers or sisters? Give me the kids out there. Let me see. Let me see. woo -hoo for me. All right. I see you. I see you. <laughs> All right. I ask that because at my graduation, my two daughters, who weren't nine and seven years old, sat up in the balcony, we used to do this at the county center, um, with their big handmade sign, there was like glitter and sparkles and marker everywhere, feathers flying, and it said, way to go mommy on it. So it's very special to me to see the kids here cheering on mom or dad or their big brother or their big sister who have worked so hard for this day. And that leads me to tell you a little story about being a mom and an older student here at Westchester Community College. One day, um, my daughters had a play date with a little girl that came over to the house. And they were downstairs in the playroom and I'm standing at the top of the stairs and I hear my older daughter say to the little girl who had come over, so what school does your mommy go to? <laughs> and I love that story because it shows how utterly normal it was to my daughter that her mom went to school. School to her was something anyone could do at any age and that nobody ever really stopped going to school. So I want to talk about that for just a few minutes this morning, this afternoon. Oh, I'm stuck in the morning. <laughs> yes, this is a time for celebrating all that you've accomplished over the last two years, or maybe it's taken you even more than two years. And you should revel in all that you've done and celebrate the degree that you're about to receive. But there's a reason why this ceremony is called commencement. Commence means to begin. And I always thought that was so strange. Why, I wondered, at the end of all of my schooling, after all the classes were over and the tests were taken, why were they telling me I was just about to begin? Well, of course, it's because you're beginning a whole new phase in your life. It may be your working life. This is when you take what you've learned here and you go out and you make your way in the world. But I want to challenge you today to a different vision of your new beginning. I want you to view this ceremony as the commencement of something more than just the next phase in your life. I want you to see this commencement ceremony as the starting point of a lifetime of learning, a lifetime of growth. And I know, I can hear it. I hear your internal groans and I see you rolling in your eyes. Why? Why is this woman talking about more learning on the day that I finally get to say goodbye to this place? So let me explain. For some of you, you're already there. You've been accepted to a four-year school. You're going to continue on and get your bachelor's degree. Congratulations. That's amazing. I did the same thing. I, after I received my diploma here from WCC, I transferred up to Vassar College, where I eventually graduated Phi Beta Kappa with a political science degree. And after that, I was pretty much fried. Just like some of you might be thinking here today, in my mind, I was done with school. I wanted to put that behind me, check it off the list. I'd gotten that degree. I mean, wasn't that enough? I had a degree, I had a good job lined up. I was satisfied, or was I? Hmm. I spent the next several years building a career in politics and raising my kids, but eventually, I knew I was gonna have to go back to school. I had always wanted to be a lawyer, 
Ever since I was a little girl and I read To Kill a Mockingbird, I felt that was my life's calling, to pursue justice through the law. I just didn't know how I was ever going to really get there. So you see, at that point, I was a single parent with two teenage girls working long hours uh, as chief of staff, and law school just seemed way out of reach to me. But then I thought about all I had accomplished here at WCC and my years at Vassar, and I remembered how exciting it was to learn new things, to know that I was working towards something that would make me a better person, that would help me support my family, that would illustrate to my kids who were watching me very closely the value of education, hard work, and perseverance. So in 2009, I enrolled in Pace's, uh, Pace Law School's evening program. This was the plan. I was gonna work all day full time as chief of staff. I was gonna attend law school four nights a week. I was gonna do all my homework on the weekends and in between, I was gonna raise my kids all by myself. How hard could that be? It was ridiculously hard. <laughs> But four chaotic years later, I graduated magna cum laude with a law degree. And you know what I remember most from my graduation day at law school? How tired I was. <laughs> and maybe you feel the same way right now. But I also felt a sense of pride, a sense of accomplishment in all that I had done. And maybe you feel a little bit of that right now, too. I went on to clerk for a federal judge, and I ended up with my dream job as a prosecutor at the Westchester County District Attorney's Office. You would think after law school I would have had enough, right? I mean, I had my associates from WCC, I had my bachelor's from Vassar, I had my law degree from Pace. Nope, not enough. Something inside me told me I could do just a little bit more. So I wanted to continue to learn. I wanted to continue to achieve and to push myself. So when I learned about the first online master's program offered by the Clinton School of Public Service at the University of Arkansas, I applied. And at 48 years old, I found myself in school again. My friends thought I was crazy. Two years later, I received my master's in public service, and today, I'm legal counsel to the highest ranking judge in the state of New York, the Honorable Janet D. Fiore. In my current position, <laughs> thank you. Thanks. In my current position, I write decisions and orders for the Court of Appeals, that's New York's highest court. The same decisions and orders that I studied when I was in law school. And it all started right here, right at this graduation more than 20 years ago. I had no idea when I walked across the stage to receive my diploma that I would go on to earn three more degrees and end up working for the most powerful judge in New York State. But what I did know is that WCC had set me up for success. Whatever that looked like, I wasn't sure, but it instilled in me these three things. First, a sense of power. Back when I was a student here, my personal circumstances were overwhelmingly against me. But graduating from WCC gave me the power to take control of my life and my future. If I never did anything else, I could look back at my graduation from this school and know that I could write my own story because WCC had given me the pen and the paper to do that. Second, WCC gave me not only a love of learning, but the opportunity to see firsthand how education can lift a person up. With every degree I obtained, with every skill I learned, I saw myself rise, and not just in my career or on the economic ladder, but as a person. With every new, new idea I was exposed to, I became a better version of myself. Lisa Dented 2.0, or 3.0, or 4.0. My first lesson in how education can change a person's life happened right here on this campus to me. And finally, WCC gave me a clearer vision of myself. When I walked across this stage and they slapped that diploma in my hand, I knew right then there was no stopping me. I, I didn't know how it was going to happen or when it was going to happen, but I knew this, it was going to happen for me. There was no doubt about that. So I want you to feel that same sense of commencement today. Maybe you will go on to earn multiple degrees. 
Or maybe you'll turn that entry-level job into a CEO position. Or maybe you'll decide to learn a new language, or travel the world, or mentor a young colleague, or volunteer at a nonprofit, whatever it is. I just want you to view today as the beginning of your lifelong journey. So as you sit here today, yes, be proud of all you've accomplished. Be proud of that diploma, those awards, that scholarship. Be proud of the grades you got, the activities you participated in, the sports you played. Look back and be proud. But remember, this is not just a graduation. This is a commencement. Westchester Community College is your starting point. It's your launching pad. It's only the beginning of everything that you can do. And if you continue to learn, to grow, to invest in yourself, to push yourself forward, then perhaps one day you will be standing on this stage, giving the commencement speech to a room full of WCC graduates. I can't wait to come back and hear you tell your story. Thank you and congratulations. That was so inspirational. What a journey. I like that notion of the launching pad. So thank you, Ms. Denick. Would you mind returning to the podium for just a moment? On behalf of SUNY Westchester Community College, I present you with a small token of our appreciation. Thank you for coming to inspire our graduates. And it's a reminder to Keep in mind our, our focus on building minds and building futures. So thank, thank you, you so much for thank your you, engagement Dr. today. Our ceremony continues with the presentation of awards. And it is my pleasure to introduce the Provost and Vice President for Academic Affairs, Dr. Vanessa Morris, to announce our many student successes and achievements. Thank you, President Miles, and good evening or good afternoon, everyone. We begin with the SUNY's Chancellor Award for Student Excellence. Only 180 students received this award across the 64 campus system for achievements in academics, leadership, career achievement, athletics, and community service. When I call your name, please stand and remain standing. Please hold your applause until I have read all the names. Guadalupe Conde, Paulina Yasebets, Liam Murphy. Thank you, you may be seated. Next, we celebrate the academic and extracurricular excellence of our graduates. For a complete list of graduates who have received an award or a scholarship from the college, please refer to your program. At this time, if you have received an award, a scholarship, or another honor from the college or a community group, please stand. Please join me in congratulating all of our award winners. Now we recognize two students who took rigorous courses, got involved in leadership activities, and achieved a 4.0 cumulative GPA. First, I invite Liam Murphy, our salutatorian, to stand and be recognized. Liam has completed his degree in business management. Liam served in several leadership roles at the college, including Editor-in-Chief of the Viking News, President of the Finance and Investment Club, and SGA Senator. In his spare time, he performed work study in our Strategic Marketing and Communications Department, and Liam will be attending Columbia University or Yale this fall, where he, <laughs> where he intends to further prepare himself for a career in finance. Congratulations, Liam. You may be seated. 
Next, I invite Paola Baber Sanchez, our valedictorian, to join me at the podium while we recognize her with our applause. <laughs> Paola, Paola comes to us from Sao Paulo, Brazil, where her father developed her into a passionate soccer fan, and her mother influenced her love of drawing and painting. I have heard that Paola is an incredible artist. As well as being an incredible artist, she's obviously an incredible student, with a 4.0 GPA as a marketing major. In addition to her studies, Paola has been very active on campus as a leader and participant in many clubs and activities, and as a Katherine Davis scholar, co-founded a so social project named Art and Soul. She was just named a Jack Kent Cooke Foundation Scholarship and, will be, uh, and is hoping to transfer to NYU in the fall. Paola will now deliver her valedictory remarks. Thank you for your introduction, Dr. Morest. Good afternoon, peers, faculty, staff, administrators, and loved ones who were present throughout this academic journey. It is a great honor to be serving as your valedictorian here tonight, this afternoon, not tonight yet. According to the Webster Dictionary, I'm just kidding, I, there's no other way to start this speech than by saying how incredible it is to celebrate this capstone in person, with us being able to commemorate such an important moment surrounded by those who helped us along the way, and by walking up to the stage after two years of turmoil. This room is filled with resilient people, and I am immensely proud of every single one of us. Graduation alone is something to be extremely proud of, but that you kept going amid such uncertain, challenging times makes your accomplishment that much more noteworthy. We went from learning in person to unprecedented online learning methods. We all became Zoom experts, or almost experts, as we could still hear the you're muted every now and then, and we slowly started transitioning back to on-campus learning. Today, we can finally celebrate all that we have accomplished here, together. We remain strong when times were trying, we remain focused when we had the background and visual noise around us, and we remain resilient when it seemed easier to give up. I myself, at one point, considered giving up. As an international student, it seems like it's easier to fall into the trap of believing that we are alone. I have not seen my family since 2019, and although technology can still connect us, we cannot have the warmth that can be provided only by our loved ones. Not only did I really feel the isolation brought about by the pandemic, but I also thought I was not doing enough and I would not be able to deliver my best. My imposter syndrome became a huge part of who I was. However, while I was struggling to believe in myself, others showed they did. Staff members and professors, alongside dear friends and family, helped me see that I was much stronger than I thought I was. They gave me confidence to keep going, inspired me to be my best, and reminded me of what I was striving to accomplish and what I was capable of. One step at a time, I made it here with all of you. We are never alone, and we should never believe otherwise. In fact, this belief reminds me of a, fa of a quote an advisor here would often reiterate to me. If you want to go fast, go alone. If you want to go far, go together. This holds true not just in our academic lives, but in all life. We all face our own challenges that affect us in particular ways. We might encounter similar problems sometimes, but still be affected differently, which is something the pandemic clearly brought to light. Together, we faced the pandemic. Together, we persevered. And together, we celebrate. By being here today, we are proving that no matter what, we did not give up. And although some days might have been harder than others, we still continue to invest in ourselves, we remain focused on our goals, and we worked hard to be celebrating our incredible accomplishments. Becoming a college student, enrolling in and attending classes, submitting assignments, becoming active in the college community, they are all choices that we had to make. And they all mean one thing. We chose a better future for ourselves, we chose to work hard so more doors would open for us, we chose to believe in ourselves. We might have stumbled and fallen along the way, but we all got back on our feet. Mistakes are not something to be ashamed of, but there is something to be seen as part of our learning journey. As a Brazilian writer named José Jalencar once said, 
Success is born of willingness, determination, and persistence in reaching a goal. Even if they do not reach the target, those who seek and overcome obstacles will, will at least do admirable things. We have done such admirable things because we did not stop, and we all plan to keep going beyond WCC. As we leave this room today and make our ways back home, I hope we all continue to choose to enact our best selves every day. I hope we all continue to believe in ourselves. On behalf of all graduates present here today, I would like to thank every single Westchester Community College employee from all departments and offices who helped us build this bridge to a brighter future. I would like to personally thank Professors Fahad Amin, Maria Vittoria, and Stephanie Archer for going above and beyond their role as incredible professors to help me stay on track and keep me motivated during my academic career, as well as my curriculum chair, Professor Fine. I would also like to thank my loving family, who all the way from Brazil continuously showed me amazing support and my encouraging partner. Class of 2022, we did it. Congratulations, obrigada, and thank you so much, everyone. Outstanding, class of 2022. At this time, we've come to a special part of our ceremony where we celebrate the 50th anniversary class. That is this fine group of individuals here in the golden robes celebrating their golden anniversary of their graduation. Will the members of the class of 1972 please stand? Well, they all stood together, and I, I, I'll just share with you that we have with us the, class, the classes of 1970, 1971, and 1972 with us. And so we thank you all for joining us today. It is tradition that our 50th anniversary celebrants join us in leading the commencement procession. And while the pandemic has delayed our celebration, we're happy to have you all join in a cluster. You had wonderful energy. It was so much fun having lunch with you today. And while we know that COVID is continuing to keep some of our honorees from making the trip, we look forward to seeing them at future Golden Alumni events, and we thank you for your active engagement. To those of you who are here, congratulations on this milestone anniversary and thank you for celebrating with all of our graduates in the class of 22 as well. Thank you so much. <clears throat> and now we come to another special moment in our ceremony, the one that you've been waiting for, the conferral of certificates and degrees and the presentation of our graduates. I invite Provost Morris to return to the podium to present this year's graduates on behalf of the faculty. Will the graduates please rise? President Miles, it is my pleasure to present the diploma candidates who have, with diligence and honor, fulfilled the requirements for the degrees of Associate in Arts, Associate in Science, and Associate in Applied Science, and the College Certificate. By direction of the faculty, I commend them to you and recommend granting the degree or certificate together with all the appertaining rights, honors, and privileges. Provost Morris, I am pleased to accept these candidates from the class of 2022 and under the laws of the state of New York and by action of the Board of Trustees, I hereby confer upon you your degrees with all the rights, honors, and privileges appertaining thereunto. Congratulations. Please be seated. As we prepare to announce the names of the graduating class, we ask the graduates to wait until a marshal calls your row to come on stage. Once you have received your diploma, you may temporarily remove your mask for a photo on stage. It's actually down there. After graduates cross the stage, the marshals will direct you back to your seats 
for the conclusion of the ceremony. Kai A. Paris. Yeah. Valeria Andrea DeFeo. Maite Panyan. Genesis J. Wacho. <laughs> Romer Duval. <laughs> David Crusado, Jr. <laughs> Russell E. Verist, Jr. Alexis Zapata. Andrew Senna. Melissa M. Brown. Adam A. Adamu. Eric M. Bizignano. <laughs> Snyder Franco Kiripoma Jimenez. Kimberly N. Pizella. Leslie Guadalupe Barajas Torres. <laughs> Alba Samantha Guzman. <laughs> Sophia Leal Copel. <laughs> Jason N. Rader. Alexander G. Lupitin. David Maldonado. Jada L. Miller. Andres Cardona. Thomas J. Inia. Nicholas A. Beltran. <laughs> Brianna A. Martinez. <laughs> Nam Phon Wong Se. <laughs> Maureen Torres.
May Elian. Lana Williams. Catherine Ann Murray. Monique Nora Umstead. Elliot J. Smith. Gary G. Medvechki. Anthony M. Santiago. Dylan Ortiz. Paulina Eva Yeshkovich. Nicholas N. Grant. Luvia Ix Meza. Leah R. Turner. Catherine Guzman. Jesus Brigid Gonzalez. Shakira Bar Allen. Toyin O. Olademeji. Isabel R. Arroyo. Silvana Armijos. Eveline Raquel Enriquez Alvarez. Lavard L. Cosby. Danielle Jade Adams. Victoria Maria Vienni. Alexandria J. Pascal. Daleski Joseph. <laughs> Kelly James. <laughs> Kathleen E. Pino. <laughs> Alessia Gonzalez. Tatiana A. Carasquillo Mercado. <laughs> Silmara Grandes. <laughs> Fatima Rodriguez. Nadira N. Clayton. Yeah. Montserrat Frutos. Yeah. 
Jacqueline Mejia. Jody Segri. Leslie Mendoza. Eleni Plevridis. Kirby Jimenez. Brianna K. Thorne. Kiera T. Freeman. Angela T. Centeno. Rietti Lockram. Nicole Abreu. Elizabeth Gurai. Daram Devi Chaube. Karima Roper. Tiara Ayala. Renzo Alfonso Furman. Stephanie Barrigan. Olivia Taylor Daly. Yesenia D. Tovar. Helen Francis Avitable. Yvette P. Rojas Picon. Raina Simone Goddard. Chloe Elizabeth Stalker. Sophia A. DeMeo. Guadalupe Conde. Antonio Rispo, Jr. Lilybeth Iris Corso. Anaya B. Bowery. Maria Contreras. Mariella Coit. Kelsey L. Perry. Lucila H. Godoy. Mahesh A. Jackson. Gabriela D. Hernandez.
Rochelle Adriana Villa. Alexa Ray Picciano. Lillian Francis Cruz. Zeltsin Sanchez Gomez. Faisal Y. Shuaib. Axel Argel Espinosa. Joseph W. D'Souza. Valentine S. Tracy. Shakira D. Corbin. Brianna Da Silva. Nathan A. Williamson. <laughs> Stephanie Paredes Diaz. <laughs> Simbarash I. Maguizi. <laughs> Vanessa Nunez Elguera. Andrew Collins Cox. Tino Hernandez. James Barefoot. Messner Pierre. Susan Teresa Johnson. Brian Rafael Garcia. Nicholas Caicedo. Mikhail R. Graham. Maxwell C. Malone. Dianara Martinez Garcia. Irmani Anderson. Terry L. Anderson. Jennifer Lima. Carrie C. Hernandez. Cassandra T. Acosta. Christopher Moore Blaha. <laughs> Jessica A. Lamerno. <laughs> Jessica 
Angelina L. Tinto. Thomas Cavanaugh. Thomas J. Narangus. Anthony M. Carasoni. Stephen Barefoot. Estherlande Delmas. Kimberly Scott. Nasha Barrero. Rachel K. Spence. Shalia Figuereo. Shinji Tamez. Jennifer J. Barzalo Bravo. Sumi Sola T. Awaba Mila. Ora Marina Aguilar. Madison Paul Garland Torado. This is that moment for that OMG emoji. Wow, congratulations, class of 2022. Woohoo! That's so invigorating, so exciting. Wow. Well, in academic tradition, a student who's, who has not earned a degree wears the tassel of his or her mortarboard on the right side, as you're doing. However, once the degree is conferred, the scholar moves the tassel to the left side, joining a select company of college-educated women and men, graduates, in recognition of your new status. I invite you to turn your tassels to the left as we applaud your astounding efforts. We welcome you to this special category of being a college graduate. And as we close our program, I remind our graduates that tonight represents the beginning of the next phase of your life. It's not a separation from the college. We will always consider you a member of the Westchester Community College family, and we will always welcome you back. At this time, Ms. Lisa Denig, president of the Alumni Association, will lead our graduates in the Alumni Pledge. Ms. Denig. Graduates, would you please stand? We're, we're gonna do this as, as a call and response. You're gonna repeat after me, okay? Ready? I pledge, I pledge to be a loyal ambassador, be a loyal ambassador for, Westchester Community College for Westchester Community College and to uphold its reputation in all that I do. I will use my knowledge, skills, and experience 
for the advancement of public good. I will remember my time at the college and those who helped me achieve my goals. As those who came before me, I pledge to use my time and my talents to help those who come after me to realize their dream of education. I am a Westchester Community College graduate. Thank you and congratulations. Thank you, Ms. Denny. Ladies and gentlemen, this concludes the 74th commencement exercise of Westchester Community College. Thank you for attending today and taking part in this wonderful ceremony. We thank again Professor Sheldon Malib for serving as Grand Marshal. We thank the members of the committees who planned year-end special events for students that celebrated student success and the many student volunteers, marshals, and staff for their tremendous work in this magnificent ceremony, in this magnificent space. Graduates, faculty, platform party, please stand for the Grand Marshal to lead the academic recessional. First the platform party will recess, followed by the graduates. After all the graduates have recessed, we ask our guests to exit the building. Once again, congratulations to the class of 2022.